My name is Lacey Stockton, and I grew up in the mountains of Nederland, Colorado, which is at 8,600 feet. I spent my childhood riding around um, the mountains of the Continental Divide. I have a lot of background in emergency veterinary medicine because generally they're healthy as a horse until they're not. I've got a pretty broad medical background. I know my basics in CPR and first aid. As far as my nursing goes, I have been a hospice nurse. I saved that when it was actually my horse chewer when I was a little kid. He kind of became a father figure to me and he really encouraged me to take that first pack trip. And <laughs> we did a point to point trip. So when we started out on this 40 mile pack trip, we'd just gotten on the horses after a big wreck. And I asked everyone, well, where's the map? And everyone was like, what map? I thought they were joking and we literally went 40 miles without a map. And it, the good thing was, is I sat down and I always remember the topography that's on those maps. I remember what mountains were going around, what valleys. And when the trail splits, I, I study which way we should turn and what valley we should go up or something more than looking at the exact trail. And last day, I knew that if we could find this place called American Flats, that I could find my way to the horse thief trail and get out of there. I knew that was Southwest. We kind of had an argument in camp that morning because it was solid fog about which way north was. <laughs> and luckily I had a compass that I picked up on a previous ride that summer that was just on the side of the road where I got off my horse. And I was able to pull that compass out and prove that I was right on my directions. And we did get out. We had gotten to this area. We rode for hours in the fog. I couldn't even see the horse in front of me. and. All of a sudden, it felt like we got to a really open area. The trail turned from a one trail into two tracks of an old Jeep road. And I remember thinking, I think we're near American Flats. And the second I thought that, all the fog lifted within seconds. And the first thing we saw were two great Pyrenees shepherds trotting down the mountainside. And then the fog rolled back a little more and there was this giant herd of sheep up there. And then the fog rolled back a little more and you could see the tops of these giant 13,000 foot peaks and like this sheep camp, the wall tent with, all, with the wood stove going and all the smoke coming out of it. Everyone that was on that trip, we all felt like we had traveled through the fog to like 100 years ago. It was one of the coolest moments I've ever had in my life. We were coming out of the woods on our last day and we it had rained the entire trip as well. And we got to our last river crossing and it had been completely blown out by a flash flood um, the days prior to our, us reaching that. And we couldn't turn back. I mean, we would have had to go 30 more or more miles to get back to the other end and our horse trailers are only two miles away. So we ended up, we had to go down the river till we got to a bank that the horses would get in, like a two foot bank. Where it blew out, it was six feet high. There was no jumping down it. We got down to the lower bank and the river was so brown and full of mud, we couldn't tell how deep it is. But we got the first horse in there and realized it was only knee deep and we ended up riding up that river till we got to a bank on the opposite side of the river where we could climb the horses out. We got out of that and Scott Booten was with me and he asked our friend Donnie, <laughs> he goes, well, what did you think of the trip? And Donnie, we're just riding along on our last day and we're we're all so proud of ourselves for getting through that river crossing and Donnie goes, well, Scott, um, well, well, it was, it was, and Scott goes, extreme? <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, it was extreme. So that's how we've got the name Extreme Pack Trip. It's just the epitome of what you can do in life.